my internet seems a little slow today. I've been having problems with my internet all day today. So hopefully it works out well tonight. So as we're sharing today, um, if somebody could volunteer to please type the names into the chat as we're talking about it, it will help with us. And um, yeah, that's about it. So I have, um, I do have observations from a handful of people that we can start with because I see nobody has, uh, nobody's ready to share anything else yet. So I will start with that. Okay. I will start with, um, well, the, in, in the order is um, Shihong. I'm, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. Are you with us tonight? I won't hear anything from them yet. So hopefully they will come. They, they sent me a few photographs they wanted to share, but um, then I will pass right over. I'm gonna pass over mine for now. Um, I'll go to Dave. We'll go right in order. So Dave, you sent me a bunch of stuff. You wanna pick five out of here that we can start with? Uh, yeah, I was having trouble clicking the unmute. Okay, I got it now. Uh, just go in order. I'm, I'm not sure what these are. Okay. I'll have to see them. You know, I gave you a bunch of them in case you run out of stuff. Yep, we can always come back around. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, my wife went out for a walk on um, Saturday, and I, I had thought mushrooms are pretty much over <laughs> around here. We've had some pretty cold mornings, 18 degrees a couple weeks ago, low 20s, um, days that barely got out of freezing. Uh, she went home and, um, or she went out for a walk, came home with three um, Hygrophorus flavodiscus. They're, they're somewhere on the list. So I went out the next day. I, I thought, okay, I'll see if I can get some trichomas and some other things. And um, one of these, the one that's not harvested, that's in the lower right, um, was growing next to some bluets. And I thought, that's a strange looking bluet. Maybe it's not a bluet. And um, so I, I got my knife under the stock and popped out one of them. Well, maybe it's the one on top actually that I saw first. And I thought, that's not a bluet. And sometimes just because you're, you have an expectation, it throws you off. And I should have recognized these really as, as a species of Melanoleuca, uh, the tightly spaced gills, um, the um, notched attached gills, um, white gills, um, but actually, though, I guess I should not be too critical of myself because they're these mushrooms are fairly generic looking in, in general, but they are a Melanoleuca species. I didn't put a name on these yet. Um, uh, what's that one, Melanoleuca species? I think that there's several species these could be, but these are interesting macroscopically, or I'm sorry, microscopically, more so than um, macroscopically, they have the the gills are loaded with all sorts of weird cystidia, um, <clears throat> chylocystidia on the gill edge, um, pleurocystidia on the gill faces, and and they basically are the, the same sorts of variable shapes in in both places. Um, the spores are have amyloid warts. Um, that's one thing. If you have melters and you can test for amyloidity, um, you'll immediately see a dark black amyloid reaction if you put a drop of melters on the spore print. And it's because the, the spores have amyloid warts. And I guess the walls are somewhat amyloid also, but it's the warts are what really stand out. This picture doesn't do it justice. This was snapped through a binocular scope. And so it, the resolution's not great. So here are the hymenial cystidia, meaning cystidia that are found on gills. And I'm not sure which are plural and which are chyla because I wasn't really paying that much attention because they were just all over the place. So there's one looks, you know, it's kind of pointed. Here's another one. This one's apically encrusted. See if, see the top is looks kind of rough on the, on the apex. That's, um, that's an encrustation they'll, they'll usually call that. 
So this one is sort of shaped like a harpoon almost. And it and it's really pointy on top, and it's and it's covered with this encrustation, which actually seems to thin out as as it goes pretty far down down the neck of this thing. So that's another hymenial cystidium. Uh, I think I got a few more pictures here of cystidium. Here's another one. See how the shapes are really pretty variable. Um, so this one is sort of. Um, pretty thick and then it just tapers pretty pretty abruptly and then there's another taper that's pretty abrupt to a to a little pointed apex so i'm not sure um you know the the words that are used to describe cystidia shapes are still somewhat of a mystery to me i think i know what one of the words means and then i see it applied and it seems like it's being applied differently so um so this one here, that's another one. It's got like a thick bottom part and the top part is fairly thick. So these are all on found on just one little piece of gill, tiny little piece of gill, like, like you know, half the size of the head of a pin. And that's actually a pretty big um, amount of material to mount. And uh, mounted in Congo red, although you don't see the red too much because my monocular scope uh, doesn't pick up color very well. So that's Melanoleuca. And um, the species, gee, let me see. I'll look here in just in the index of Baroni and see, because I think there was a, a name I had in mind here. Um, so so oh. macros macroscopically to get these to Melanoleuca, they're they're what they're kind of tall, right? These are bigger mushrooms. Uh, there's one called Melanoleuca brevipes that has a really short stalk, okay. but yeah, usually the stalks are usually kind of equal. You know, you don't have like bulbous bases and stuff like that. The stalks are sometimes fiber. The stalks are kind of fibrous usually, and sometimes the the outer part of the stalk look look kind of striate and a little bit twisted, sort of like some entolomas um but um but these stocks are pretty fibrous if you break them and they're, they're not that hard to break but then they sort of tear apart right uh rather than um just break in half like a russula let's say and, and then um, notch gills right so they used to be yeah they're usually almost they're almost always notched right now yeah. i suppose if one of these were to really really expand because of a lot of rain or maybe it got warm or something then sometimes that will cause gills to stretch out um, in the downward direction, and then and then you sort of lose the notch a little bit. But generally speaking, yeah, gill attachment for melanoleuca and these, uh, is and usually. Yeah, go. They, ahead. I was just say they, these used to be tricholoma, right? Weren't probably. Yeah, I, felt, I think I think melanoleuca was broken off from tricholoma like a long time ago, but probably yeah. They kind of put them all together at one point. Yeah, well, these are saprobes, so that separates them from okay. tricholoma. But I think the amyloid spores may have been the, the reason why they were um, split off of tricholoma to begin with. But a long time ago, really, a lot of white spored mushrooms were tricholomas. Yeah, I was um, just reading that today in the whole, what is it, the family tricholoma TCA or whatever? Right, yeah, tricholom tricholomaceae, I guess. They, they, yeah. they, they call that like the wastebasket of all white spored mushrooms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that think... and, and Colibia too was, I don't even know, was Colibia part of tricholoma at one point? I'm not sure. Yeah. All right, cool, a cool find. I, yeah, I, it, was a, it was an interesting find. I've read before that these uh, Milano Lucas are really difficult to deal with. They're not not much in the way of studies have been done and not a lot of That's what Michael Quo says. He says, you know, save them and somebody might want to study them. So I'm not firing up my dryer that's up in my attic right now, but I put them in a, an aluminum uh, pie tin and, and on top of my wood burning stove. So I'll, I'll see if I can dry them out. Here's another one. This was growing very close to these Milano Luca on the same um, lawn. So I parked my car and it's this guy, he's a member of our club, it's his land. And I parked my car where he parks his car um, near a lawn and right off the bat, he well, he pointed these mushrooms out to me. There were a few different kinds on this lawn. So this was one of them. And this used to be Clytosibi compressipes. 
And now it's, um, what is it? Pseudo Omphalina compressipes. Um, and it gets its name from the fact, the species name comes from the fact that the um, stalk is compressed vertically um, right down the stalk, usually. You'll, you can see it on these. Uh, maybe there's another picture that shows it. Let's see. Yeah, like right there. I can't really see it on this. You can see it right there a little bit. Well, that's a lot of white mycelium too on the bottom of that stalk. Um, here yeah, you can see it yeah, better. See it. Yeah, yeah. There you can see the um, the vertical compression on the stalk, and um, so my spores were a lot smaller than what Michael Quo um, posted on Mushroom Observer. So I looked on Champignon du Quebec, and they for this species they suggest a really really wide range in spore dimensions, like four to 10 by 2.5 to six or something like that. That's a really, really large range. That leads me to suspect this might be a species complex. You know, cause this is another one. It's probably not really all that well understood. So I've got these in a different um, pie tin on, on top of the wood burner. So we'll see if they dry out nicely enough to store. So kind of two interesting finds right on one lawn. Those are the spores, they're pretty small. I, I think the biggest ones were like maybe almost seven microns, something like that. That's pretty small. But within the range reported on Champignon du Quebec, just the lower part of the range. I went, so in the, in the stand of um, um, Scott's Pines where I find the triculomas, the edible trichomomas. There's that's where I first found these neolectus. So every time I go there in the late fall, uh, you know, I'll take a few of them home. And so I I took a few of these home, photographed them, did a little microscopy. The spore size um, matches well with the other collections I've made that were identified as um, neolectus vitellina. I had one. I had a, one of the collections sequenced by Linus Kuzma. It was a 100% match. For one of David Hewitt's um, Neolecta uh, Vitalina collections. And um, so the spores are a little smaller than Neolecta irregularis, which is the, the species that you will see um, documented in some field guides, in most notably maybe the Audubon. Uh, it's not in a whole, they're not in a whole lot of field guides. They're not all that common. Um, and then I also measured a few of the Ascii. And, and once again, the Ascii were larger than what is reported for Neolecta vitellina. Uh, I think the range for Neolecta vitellina, the Anascus is, should be between uh, 50 and 70 or something my, um, uh, microns. And, and these were coming in at maybe about 85, 87. You can see the spores in that, in this one. Oh, good, you got a zoom there. You can see the spores in that Ascus there. So that was pretty cool. Uh, my microscope is not the best, but it's, you know, but it's good enough to, um, to see some details and sometimes even to see that much detail. So, yeah, so I, that's another one of those. I've shown them on here before. Uh, those, these are, um, somebody corrected me on this last week, I believe, maybe, that my understanding of why these are considered to be a very primitive um, fungus, it's because they have not evolved. <laughs> They're like, the same way they were, you know, many, many, many years ago, and it's it's like this taxa or tax or a taxon or taxa because there's two species that have done very, very little in, in the way of evolving from uh, from anything else because the, so they are what they were. So kind of an interesting thing to find under pines, almost always under pines. When I was with Sue Hopkins in the Adirondacks, we found. Um, she pointed them out to me, Neolecta irregularis. And I think those were under spruce. I would have to check my notes, or it might have been spruce mixed with pine. But conifers, these are always under conifers. These can be confused with a variety of other uh, white and yellow um, um, sort of earth tongue fungus. Um, there's like a not geoglossum but some glossum type thing that's yellow. I forget the genus. 
Uh, there's also the swamp beacons, the um, mitrilla bacon beak. In fact, I when I when I uh, go when I just sort of cruise around in the internet and look for neolecta, I find some other things that people uh, said were neolecta. And a nasabi growing under a pine tree on a, or a hemlock tree on a lawn, and these are you know the epitome of boring little LBMs, little brown mushrooms. You know until you start looking at under the microscope and then they get kind of exciting um, because these are another uh, thing that have a lot of cystidia. And so it used to be that genus Inasibi had a lot more mushroom species in it than it does now because the genus has recently been split. And now instead of just one species Inasibi, we have the Inasibaceae. And I believe there's something like five or six genera housed in the family in Asabaceae. I think we have four of these genera in, in North, uh, Eastern United States, North America. But these are in Asabi, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm right about that because they have pleural cystidia. So once again, um, I found there's those, those are the spores there. But once again, I found, oh, and these don't have crazy looking, you know, spores that look like, um, you know, um, mines that they would put in, in, in the ocean in World War II. Those are sort of regular boring looking spores, but look at all those cystidia, all those um, hymenial cystidia. I'm not sure if these are pleuro or ch chylo. These are probably pleuro. They look like metulloids to me, thick walled, um, encrusted apices, uh, which is pleural of apex. I guess you can say apexes if you want. Either way is is allowable, is acceptable. But this is at 100 times magnification, so that's good. It's a good idea to zoom like you just did, Luke. Uh, but you see, you can see like so many of them in one frame because it's not high magnification. It's 100 times uh, magnification. Most of my other micro pictures are taken at 400. With, like this next one. So these are the same cystidia really, but I just um, upped the, um, um, the magnification to 400. So see they're kind of buried in the gill material and you just see really the necks uh, sticking out. And there's some other pictures of cystidia. Um, they sort of, this one you can see the base a little bit, it looks like a bottle. Yeah, it's really shaped like a bottle and it's got, um, the ornamented apex, the encrusted apex, which it looks like it has like a like a knit hat on or something. Um, so so those get interesting once you put them under the microscope, and 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 it's there's probably a lot of inosibi species out there that are not described. That shot's not bad right there. You can see almost that entire cystidium there in the low lower right. It's probably the, the base probably tapers um, to a pretty sharp point, and that's what's stuck inside the, the rest of the gill material there. So you can see it's got a thick wall. But anyway, we can move, you know, if you want to look at some more, that's fine, or we can come back or let's see what we have here now. Well, here's your fifth uh, one, so we'll do that. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, well, here's another pretty interesting one. So I thought this might be. Mycena uh, grisio viridis, uh, because they're because it had like the white bloom on the caps, and the caps are kind of gray, and the and the stipes are kind of yellowish, and you'll see the color better in a posed photo that's coming up a little 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 while. Uh, but I couldn't find any um, chylocystidia, and usually I can find a few with uh, um, grisio viridis. Um, and also the spores were too small they, and they were shaped the wrong way. The, the Q, Q is, refers to the word quotient and it's a ratio of length to width. And the Q for these spores was highly variable and but not, not very big. In other words, the widths were fairly close to the lengths. So, hmm, I thought, I don't know, maybe it's Grisio viridis, but then an MO, um, user Eva Askefik sent me an email and she said, well, these might be Mycena viridis. And so I couldn't find a whole lot of information on Mycena viridis, 
It's actually Ingus Index Fungorum just says it's a peptorigium. Um, but a lot of places on the internet treat it as a variety of a peptorigium. So it's Mycena peptorigia variety viscosa. And I'm pretty sure that's what these are. Um, although I couldn't find information on, on um, um, sport. You know what? I've got somewhere around here, Rene Leboeuf's um, Mycena key. I'll have to dig that out. I forgot to do that, actually. But you can see here how the stipes are kind of yellow and the caps are kind of frosty looking with because they're like a bloom on them. So that's why I thought these were Grisio veritas. But um, I'm pretty sure I've got the idea right now. Um, is that Epipterygia variety? Is it viscosa? Is that what I have written down there? Something with a V. Yeah, I also submitted uh, one Friday today, but uh, my my caps are far more yellow than you. Yeah, that sounds like a Epipterygia, the like the variety of Epipterygia. If that's a variety, but there's like an official Epipterygia, and that one's yellow, and the stipes are yellow. And one of the things here that really makes me agree with Eva about this being a variety of Epipterygia. The stipes are have so much um, viscid stuff on them. They're sticky. It's really It was really hard for me to pose the mushrooms because they kept sticking to my fingers. <laughs> um, so, very, so the stipes are really viscid on these. It doesn't look it in the photo, but they are. You, you just touch one of these stipes and it's stuck to your finger. Yeah, even the caps stuff. are quite sticky. The caps aren't that sticky. No, not on no, these. Not, not that sticky, but they are sticky. Oh, on your, yeah, Pipterygia, yeah. the yellow Pipterygia should have a sticky cap also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can kind of tell when you're looking at this, all this debris that's stuck to it. Yeah, yeah, you can see that. Yep. All right, cool. Well, well, thank you, Dave. <clears throat> nice finds as usual. Okay, Marisol, you ready? Hmm. You are not coming through, Marisol. I can hear you making noise, but it's... It's kind of Ewokian. It does sound like an Ewok. Yeah, Marisol, you sound funny. <clears throat> Maybe maybe you want to log off and log back on, Marisol. Oh, Is she still there? I can't even see because I'm sharing my screen. Did she log off? But you know, what? okay, we'll come back to her. I see. Um. Yes, yeah, she, she did log, log off. off. Okay. She logged yeah. off. Cool. I saw Shi Hong is logged on now. Shi Hong, would you like to share? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So would you okay. like me to share your photographs or do you want to share your screen? I can share my screen, yeah. Okay. I'll stop my sharing then. And... Okay. Am I saying your name right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let me know if you can see my screen. Oh. Can, can you hear me now? I'm sorry, I'll oh. be... We, we can, Marisol. So we just skipped ahead of you one step. Yeah. We'll come right yeah, back yeah. around. Yes, yes. You sound good now, though. Okay, okay. Okay, let me know if you can see my screen. We can see your thumbnails. Okay. I'll click over one. Yep, you're coming through. All right, let's make this. So this is what I see. Uh, on Sunday morning, under a pie tree. First, I see this egg-shaped uh, mushroom. Then I see next to it, there's a stick hole. So I took the, one of them back, wash it up and cut it open. It looks very pretty. That is amazing. Um, what, what area did you find this in? Uh, this is uh, in water. Watch wrong, huh? Yeah, very nice pictures. Yeah, do they 
supposed to be uh, around at this time or? No, not supposed to. There must be in a well protected area. Looks like they have nice or some black mulch. Yeah, it's it's yeah. in the mulch. Yeah. Looks like the eggs are well protected on the ground also. The bottom one that you did cut open looks a bit decimated uh, or desiccated. Um, they could be fold inside still at that stage with a gel, I think. And plus the tips look like there's a mold culture at the end. Mm -hmm. There's a mold. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the black. Oops. Oops, sorry. I found them like two or three weeks ago on the same conditions, mulch. I went to buy some Chinese food and while I wait, I went in the mulch and I found them. I brought them home and they uh, bloomed during the night. I wet them <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like two weeks ago. Uh, yeah, I'm going mulch. Mutinus elegans, I think. Oh, there you go. Yeah, how about Mutinus ravenellii? Um, I'm not sure about that. One, I think one of them. Um, I don't see elegans in in Baroni's book. I mean, it really. I'm looking in Baroni's book, and it really fits Mutinus ravenellii pretty well. Okay, comments. Mutinus elegans um, can be similar in similar in color, even with orange hues, but it differs by lacking a clearly marked head with the slime running further down. The oh, um, does this, this thing have a in, yeah. clearly marked head? It looks like it doesn't actually, it's just got slime. Yeah, you can see part. on the cap, Dave. There's this green slime on the cap. Yeah. yeah, it's only, okay. Yeah, so this is probably elegant then. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so Ravenelli, which the pictures in in um, Baroni's book don't really show this very well, has like it's probably like a rim on the on the lower part of the head, separating it from the rest of the of of the fruit body. So that he explains that that's the difference. But what about the, the shape of the egg, too? Well, it says ovate. You know, for Ravenelli, oh. it mm -hmm. says ovate. I mean, that was the first thing I looked at really here. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Ovate eggs. Yeah, they're pretty similar otherwise. Uh, there is that one difference. Right. Dave, could you type the name in chat so I can copy it down? It is in there. Marisol put it in for us. Okay. CS. <laughs> Okay, can I, can I move on to the next one? Yeah, you can go ahead and show five of them, okay? <laughs> okay. That's what, that's what we're trying, we try to do five, five per person. Okay. So this one's the end of the same tree. It's three mushrooms linked together. I, I turn it upside down, look like this, and I clean it up and put on the, uh, black background there are no after three days i did not see any spore print it looks like they're too young to drop spores so okay. they would have had to mature probably but i think this is lyophyllum one of the species in the lyophyllum dicastes group so i i'm thinking that probably they would have white spores but without seeing a spore print it's mm -hmm. hard to be real confident It's just fantastic to see three mushrooms growing out of the same base. That's yeah, that's really unique. Well, with Lyophyllum dicastes, you can see a lot more than that um, mm -hmm. fused together at, at at the bottoms of the of the stalks. Really? Yeah, yeah, these are nice. really big ones. These look pretty big. Were these big mushrooms? How big were these caps? These are really like my thumb. Each one. Oh, they're pretty small then. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they're not expanded. Um, but I think that's what they are, something in the Lyophyllum dicastes group. If you look up Lyophyllum dicastes online, you're going to see pictures that look a lot different from one another. 
it's it's probably a species group, but they tend to occur in either early spring or the or or fall. Uh, so they're kind of a cool weather mushroom. They grow usually on lawns or in open areas, the disturbed ground. They're not you usually don't find them in the woods in forests. They find them in open areas, and they're always fused together. At, at the bottoms of the stalks are fused together into clusters. So there's other Lyophyllum species as well. Um, and Lyophyllum dicastes is probably a name that applies uh, likely to more than one species also. Yeah, could you please type the name in chat, please? I already did. Oh, you already did. Great. <laughs> You're so good. Yeah, yeah I'll want me to type it in? I'll get it. Dave, yep. I did. Marisol did it already. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Let me move this and show another one. This one, I think I know it's a, a beverage shack. Look at that stipe. Yeah. <laughs> it's really dense. Kind of velvet on the bottom. And it's very sticky on the, on the cap. And, yeah, and a white spore print. And a white spore print, yeah. Do you have a name for that one? Excuse me? Do you have a name for that one? Uh, I I saw it's a velvet shank. Oh, I don't know those names. Yes. Yeah, well, that's that's its common name. Yep, you are okay. correct. Flamulina. Is it Flamulina velutipes? Yeah. yeah. I, uh, love oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, good job. You got that one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, with, with that common name, you can find the scientific name, yeah? Or do you want us to write that name? No, this way I got it, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And uh, this is a pretty one. I just don't know what I have. This I found outside my dental office. My dental office. <laughs> And this is about three or four weeks ago. And I flipped over and it looked like lilac peel. And it split like, like a flower petal. And it does have a bulbous base and a color like an amanita, but the gills like a bluet. That's fascinating. That's a stropharia. Yeah, I agree. Some sort of stropharia. Yep. I don't know the species. I don't wanted to say a species name, but it's a strafaria almost certainly. See how the gills are getting gray? Wait, did Igor say Ruya Inulata? He did. It might be. They Sometimes they're really faded like this one. Oh, wow. But Rugoso Inulata usually has, well, a lot of times it'll have a more prominent um, annulus. And this, Do this they one come, here they come out this time of year, ragged. though? They come out late. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. This is they, pretty late, though. <laughs> yeah, but they, they, they're like, all, they come out late. Yeah, they like cool weather, so spring mm. and fall. Mm. What is the realm of edibility of one of these mushrooms? Well, Recuso annulata is a pretty good edible. Uh, sometimes I'll eat only the cap because the stipes tends to be a little bit fibrous sometimes. I guess if they're young, they're a little more tender. But there are other Strafaria species that, that are suspected of being... Um, at least mildly toxic. So um, if I found looking like this, really pale like this, I would want to do more analysis and probably, I'd probably want to use my microscope to, um, to see if I can find any supporting evidence, you know, to continue to think it's rugoso annulata because these are pretty pale. But a rugoso annulata does sometimes get like this, like almost no color at all in the cap. Yeah, but is that from like drying and aging? Like, even if this is Rugosa and a lot of, it looks like it, I wouldn't eat that. Well, no, I would, you know, I probably wouldn't eat it either because I would just be, I, because it's, it's, it's not like textbook Rugosa Anulata. So why take a chance? It could be some other kind of Strafaria. Um, oh. But my understanding is that there is a white form of Rugoso annulata. I think Phillips in his old field guide that was came out in like 1990 or something like that had a picture of um, one of these 
albino um, Rugosa annulata. Rugosa annulata also occurs in a yellow capped uh, variety as well, which has become fairly common over the last five, six, seven years. So, and that yellow cap one, it's yellow from the get go. It's not any kind of fading. And I think there's a the pale version is also pale from you know right from the start. Okay, right. cool. We got one, one more, Sean. Okay, let me uh, close this one. Um, let me see which one. <laughs> I have too many. <laughs> I'd like, I'd like to compliment you, Shihong, on your photographs because you've really done a nice job of capturing the, all the different details that we need, the tops and the bottoms and the habitat and the spore color. So nice job. Thank you. Okay, I'll show this one. This I found on my neighbor's lawn. I will say this is, this is a toxic mushroom, but it smells so good, like perfume. You found this recently? This is about four or five weeks ago. Oh, okay. I have November 3rd. Yeah. I, this might be Philaides, Amanita Philaides. Hmm. Yeah, Possibly. don't was, was it a little bit greenish, more greenish than the... the color shows in the photo? No, it's very white. Very white. OK, so it's and probably the, not. The bulb here is huge. Yeah, it's, pro it's probably not the ladies. It's one of the. Igor is proposing a mirvirosa. Well, there's too much color in the cap, is from my understanding of a virosa. And the gills <laughs> seem to be very tinted. He's putting a mirror verse in uh, quotations. So, oh, okay. how about uh, how about Sturgeonii? What is it, Sturgeonii? So, yeah, it's named after Walt Sturgeon. Wow, okay. yeah. cool. It's, it's another it's another destroying angel, but it's got kind of a brassy color on the cap. Okay, and it's yeah. and it's and it's a thick it's a it's a short stout one too, like mm. this. So. I think that's a possibility. I don't know how to tell them apart. Some of the destroying angels can be segregated from the others by spore morphology. Um, but outside of one or two of them that have spores that are a little bit different, the other ones can really only be distinguished by DNA. All right, I will stop sharing. So you say that Sturgeonia it normally has a little bit of a bronze color in it? The, one of the distinguishing features of Sturgeonia is it's, the cap is not pure white. It's got like a like a brassy kind of flush. Okay. Interesting. All right, cool. Well, thanks, Shahong. Very nice finds. All right. Thanks for allowing me to share. Nice presentation. Yeah, good pictures. Yep. Thanks. Okay, so we are going to work. come back around to Marisol. Okay, you ready, Marisol? Yeah. Yep. Okay, this one, this crust was found by Marius in Cactus Island. I work on it and I could not find the species and, but I knew it was to bully crinis because I know the spores. And then I sent a specimen to Karen Nakasone and she worked on it and she told me the species. So there are two names for it. And she says that it depends on who uses that. They use one name or they use another name. Look at the spores look like bananas like the way bananas are arranged on the fruiting, on the fruit, on the palm, what it, no, no, on the plant. Yeah, like a, like a bun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Is that normal? Is that? I don't why, know. Why are they, they bunching like know. that, I wonder? But I got it. This is a spore deposit. I just left the, the crust on the slide and it did that. <laughs> huh. I love it, yeah. Like in such an orderly way. 
um, and I knew the sports from to clinics, and I worked on it, but I could not get clear pictures of the um, lyocystidia that characterizes this uh, genus. And I had a name, but I wasn't sure it was because usually to bully is very thin and this cross was really thick. But Karen Nakasone confirmed that it was a to with the name. So I, it has uh, clamps and some contents. I use, um, I use fluxin, so it, it stained the inside. And I, this is the lyocystidia. I could not see it very clearly. It has very thick walls, as you can see there. And there are several species of them and the, the end of the lyocystidia is the most incredible thing. There is one that has a, a, a sphere at the, at the tip. It's really beautiful. And okay, more. Yeah, more of that. You see that at the yeah, and some may at the end there is no thick wall at the tip of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it has some kind of reflective contents of some glioocystidium. You can see this has a different color, yellowish. My photos are not so great. Yeah, but you can, even as bad as the photos are, you can see, if you look carefully in contrast with the darker areas, you can see these structures sticking up. If you go to the middle left and there's like a mouth. You can picture like, aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. but make it bigger, you can see the, yeah, you can see the elements sticking out, the lyocystidia. It's, it's exerted. Those are cystidia. Mm -hmm. You can you can see them with your naked yeah, eye. With the, with lens. How Here, big are they? Did you measure any of them? Yeah, I did. I don't have the paper out. Maybe it's on the observation itself. I, I don't remember. But with the lens, you can see it. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is fascinating. It's like you're seeing how the fungi is planning its next move of growth. And say that again. It, well, with the cystilii, like I've seen it when you close, when you, you yeah, right now, it's mm -hmm. like you're seeing it reaching out and plotting out the next place for its growth. The next oh, no. Place. No, I know what you're saying now, but no, that's not the case here. Those are um, elements that are infertile. They, yeah. they just, if I can say this, they decorate the whole hymenian surface with it. Like fingers sticking out everywhere. So mm -hmm. what you're saying, Evan, you're thinking that that is like hyphal strands, like like the growing edge of hyphal strands moving it, out. It, it's but what Marisol, of, yeah. I understand what you're saying. That's because that does happen. But what Marisol is saying is all these little points here are these things, right, Marisol? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These yeah. things, which are not the yeah. hyphal growth. That's it's a different cell structure that's doing this. So I have a question, Marcel. Like, how big is like this section right here? Uh, it was like maybe one centimeter or less. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. these are very small. Yeah. Very small. Mm -hmm. Oh, I put I posted a photo there, so you can see the whole structure. They are really exerted beyond the basidia. You can see the basidia palisade there, and how big these lyocystidias are. Look, they're showing the uh, banana spores mm -hmm. cluster too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh. That's really interesting. Yeah, that's pretty neat. That was on conifer? I don't know. Marius gave it to me. I don't remember that. Yeah, it was, I think um, it may have been conifer, yes. Bunker? It was very rotted. Nah. No. Yeah. Did he gave me a piece of bark. Yes, Marius? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rotted piece of bark. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's still bark in the back there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can, you can kind of tell right right there that that's a piece of hot Yeah, bark. but I couldn't tell. The underneath is the table. Oh, right. I said your table. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's yeah. the table, yeah. Huh. And I know you said that was really small. Did it have a texture that you could feel? Was it like rubbery, oh, no, like a stereum? Or? No, you couldn't. Oh, no, soft, soft. Soft. No, no, oh. like stereums are like leather, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I put the two names there, Glebulosus or Brasilimus. It depends with author 
wants to whatever name they want to use. Okay. She told me Karen is the expert here in in US of crust fungi. All right. Okay, this one was cool. This I get this. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say I get this. I sneak peek everyone's uh, observations that you send me beforehand. So <laughs> this one was cool. All right. I never even heard about this. So I went to Smithville like two weeks ago, or Thanksgiving, I think, Thanksgiving Day. And I found that was at the end. I was going to my car when I saw these things sticking out on the corticated wood. I cannot remember the wood if it was oak or pine, because that day I wanted to do only pine, pine wood. And I saw this sticking out and I went look close. I was like, what is this? Because it looked uh, wrinkly like merulioid. And if you look carefully, it has some kind of caps. On the lower part, the new growth, you can see some kind of caps below, not the big fruiting body, on them, the little ones, the right younger there. ones. No, no, uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, they look different. And I didn't know what to make out of it because I didn't see any yellow on the base, like in the Acrimices palmatus that is very common. So I took it home and when I did the micro, I was surprised to find that the basidia was very robust. You'll see what I mean. And look at the way it's, it's wrinkled on the top. It's, it's like going out through, through the crack, through the crack, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So these are gelatinous, I presume? And yeah, like, like rotary, jelly, like okay. a ear, like a auricularia, kind of. Yeah, jelly. yeah, I would have thought they were auricularia if I just saw them. And are there no, hairs? they're too tiny, they were too tiny. Yeah, okay. Are uh, there hairs on top? I can't quite make it out. I can't tell. I don't know that. Like, okay. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. So I took that photo and you can see, look at the wrinkles. Yeah. And it's almost like few caps put together. It's, it's weird. So then you will see what I mean when I said that it has a very robust basidia. Basidium. Yeah. You'll see it. Okay. Those are the spores and none of the spores have divisions. I have done a few other like cream ices and other jelly fungi. This one, I could not find any divisions. And some spores mature and get divisions, three, four, five, eight. All right, but I didn't see any of them. Very fast. And this is a 100x of the HIFA. Um, and it's all like convoluted, if I can say that word. That will be the flesh. Uh, below the the basidia and when you see this oh no not yet i'll show you that no i have another one but it wasn't in the right order yeah yeah show the next oh yeah you passed it for you oh you passed it it was one it, that one that one that one uh -huh. it's fuzzy i can it's even hard i have to trick the camera in the microscope to get, that's why it's so white and that's why you can even see the spores in the right way because I have to turn the light off quick and at the same time take the photo because it's too dark. So, but I got it, I got a good one right here. It's very fuzzy. I don't really know what makes it to be like that. But it's very interesting aspect of that mm, HIFA. And this is the mature basidium. And it's called forked basidium. Tuning yeah, fork. Tun tuning tuning fork. fork. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. that's a trait of Dacrymyces for sure. Yes, okay, the more spores here with Congo and the fuzziness of the HIFA. And I noticed these huge holes in the clamp connections. I had to make it blurry, but I couldn't do better than that. I couldn't do. But you can see what I mean. More of that blurry thing, HIFA, with contents. And look at that basidium. It was really weird to me. I never saw one like that when they start to develop the sterigmata, which are the tips where the spores will grow from, at the tips, yeah. So it's, it's really different. But I have no idea why you could look at this one. Oh my goodness, that was a good one. And very, cool very, photo. yeah, and very, very long. Usually, other uh, for, for tuning for basidia that I have seen, the tips 
the ends that were starting to develop the sterigmata, they are more narrow. Those were really like uh, blunt. Can I say that blunt? Blunt, yes. Yes. Like uh, rounded on the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at the one, the basidia on the left, it's really like a monster. And, and this is one of the fuzzy hiva, and it has an, uh, a little thicker end. All right. So one, uh, there is a group in Facebook for just jelly fungi, and one lady, she saw it and she said that it is this name, that Cleomyces, uh, what is the name? I forgot the name. Corticioides. Corticioides, yeah. Hmm. On the corticated wood, I don't know. Very cool find. And you pass that one. Don't do that one. That's pretty bad. The next. Okay. Right. Marisol, that texture was jelly, jelly, jelly. Jelly hard, mm -hmm. like a rubber band. Like oh, a oh, okay. Rubber band. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. I am not sure this is the name where I that I found. So this is growing in moss, very sticky. It's almost impossible to handle it. I took it home and I work on its micro. I had the best time. You will see what I found. This is like a monster inside the microscopy. It has basidia with one, two, and four sterigmata. So to me, it looked like a zoo. When, when I was doing the, <laughs> the microscopy, you see the photos. I got the spores, I got everything, even cystidia. One simple, I found one. Okay, you can see and on sandy soil with the moss at the edge of a swampy area. With the gill pattern, it does seem similar to the waxy cap family. It's a waxy cap, it's a it's hygrophorus, but it has another name. Gly, what name? Gliophorus. Gliophorus, yeah. So isn't it? I think this is my understanding. Gliophorus are the really, really slimy wax caps, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are the yeah. slimy ones. Uh -huh. Barely can pick it up slimy. Yeah, you, yep. it was really hard. And it is stuck to the paper where I brought it home and I have to wet it and scrape it off so I could get the, the gills to, to examine them. And the caps were really small and there were a few of them together. And um, like buried, almost like hidden. I had to like clear things out of them so I could take the photo. Mm. And then when I, yeah, all right. You can see that the cap is kind of small for the, in relation to the, how thick the stipe is and long, long and thick. All right. So right here, I saw very, very funny things in there. So mm, basidia are growing very weird sterigmata. And then on the sterigmata, there are double spores. Sometimes there was one basidium with one sterigmata and the spore was like a monster, huge. Like it took all the nutrients and formed only one. And here you can see to the right side, there is one with three uh, sterigmata and double spores. There is one in the left with Two esterigmatas, but one esterigmata divided in two. It's really strange. And I was reading on the, I have a book about hygrophorus and I didn't know I have one. And I was reading that it happens. They could have one, two, three, and four. So on this photo, you can see that. There are uh, basidium with one. There is one with two in the right with the two spores. And there is one with four. There. On the right, there is one with the two spores growing at the tips. And the serimata are really long. And the ones on the top are immature basidia. Okay. So when I did them, because this, this mushroom got stuck to the surface where I collected, it was getting um, hypomyces. So it's mixed with the spores. So I put some arrows to perdón, son these white lines to show you the spores from the hypomyces. And in the center, I have one basidia, basidium with four esterigmata, with four esterigmata and one with two. 
All right, you can see other monsters here. You can see unicorns, like number five has one. Number four has two, the form sterigmata. Number three has two. And there are two with two sterigmata on number three. Number two looks like a, like a deer uh, antlers. <laughs> Seahorse. <laughs> yeah, something really. And on the left, you can see a spore developing the, what's the, germinating. This was really crazy on the middle left. So now the real question is, does this super stickiness make it taste better? I don't know about that because I don't eat mushrooms too much. I, I don't really collect to eat, so I don't know that. They're healthy for you. <laughs> but some people are more inclined to eat them now. Okay, so here you can see these aberrations in the spore formation with this one, only one sterigmata. And it's already forming like two spores. On the one in the center, So, so you could probably expect a wide range in spore dimensions. Uh, yeah. Those. Oh, yes. I was reading about it today. I took the yeah. book to work and I was reading about because there was kind of like a complication. If the basidia is small, the, basi the spores will be small. If the basidia is bigger, the spores will be bigger. So what do you do when you have this problem? Yeah, I'll and have to go back to some of my observations <laughs> of these. Mm -hmm. They grow in my yard, by the way, just in a a mossy area, but it's not wet. Mm. Right. You can see the dimensions of the spore. And I comp. oh, look at that in clamp on the left at the center with a big hole. Um, look, can you show it? No, left, left. Oh, yes, yes. And those are, um, this here with this granular contents are basidia, like a club kind of thing. I was curious to see all these pigments, like concentration, pardon, of pigments. Yeah, and, and I read mm, about the mm, gliophoros uh, lietus and many things match. Oh, here, the clamps with the hole in the middle, one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. And the, the white spores are the mm, hypomyces. So the spores with a big uh, pedicel. So, so the hypomyces spores did not pick up the stain? No, they didn't. Uh, that was so weird. Yeah, uh, I don't know why. So, so that's how you can tell though, that, that was- No, but I, know the, but I know the shape too. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here you got three unicorns. It's really amazing. I love it, that was so much fun. I really worked for a long time in it. And the last one I found it on Saturday. You, you didn't show the guild fungus yet. See, I somehow I didn't post photos of the basidium and the spores. I don't know what happened there, so no, it wouldn't work. So I found this, it was single. It's darker than this, it came to, to light. It's dark brown, gray, dark brown. And it's five centimeters cap and five centimeters stipe. And it's very pointy, like a witch's hat. And I did the spores in a in a swampy area, moss and deciduous and pines. No spore pictures. Oh no! Oh, I failed with that one. Okay, but it's an entoloma. I got the measurements and I posted in the group in the in Facebook, and they su uh, suggested Bernalis. Although Vernalis means spring, but I don't know, I have no idea. But I'm working, I did the spores again, and I'm going to measure because somebody said that the spores were too small. So I work again and I just had to post the photos and the info. Yeah, it certainly looks like it could be. It could be? I'm, Even I'm, look, that is. I'm looking at pictures of it online and you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's certainly similar. That yeah, point, similar. Pointy yep. cap. Mm -hmm. Kind of the similar color of the gills. Yeah. Right. Lots of Entoloma species, though. There's yeah. actually a, many possibilities. Yeah. All right. 
So what do you think? Tim Baroni's book is probably one of the better go-tos. Where else can you go for um, deep I love the Quidex site has a whole slew oh, of Enthalomas on there. Check. Okay, uh, yeah, I've checked. There yeah. you go. All right. All right, awesome. So you don't want to look at the other one, Marisol? Mm, okay, you want Tell to- Tell us anyway. Let's see what it looks yeah, like. Okay, okay. All right, there were like four or five. Um, uh, there was an oak, uh, the corticated oak in the pine barrens on the ground, and the sport ring was white. <laughs> they smell a little bit like bleach, kind of. And I did the micro. <clears throat> I, I saw only one spore, and I tried to get the sport print, and it didn't work. That's the spore. I met. I don't know, oh, I measured a few during the preparation, but I couldn't take clear photos of the spore. So I just got that clear photo. And this is the hifa from the flesh. What's the name for that word? In the gills? Yeah, but see, I don't have more information. It has clamps. The menu? Hmm? What did you say? I manual trauma. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, I did only gives. I didn't do anything else. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What do you okay. think? What does it look like, Dave? Oh, um, well, you know, the, you would have to consider Mycena, but it, they don't really look like Mycena. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's too thick and too flat. And yeah, they're kind, oh. of, kind of thick, widely they're spaced gills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, get, I don't know. How about Gamundia? <laughs> okay, Gamundia, like it sounds. I mean, you, can, you can check that, you know. Yeah, we'll check Gamundia. Um, there's okay. not that many species. Gamundia. Uh, okay. And I think, I don't think those grow on wood either. Um, let's see if it's in Baroni's book, Gamundia. No, I never saw that name in Baroni's Gamundia. Yeah, I don't but I look it's online. Good. That's a good good point to start. Okay, thanks. Yeah, check, check that. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think there's some oh, oh, there's something else I can't remember the name alright thanks hmm. okay, I, just cool. at, I just looked at Gamundia and yeah. the spores which I know nothing about that one single spore looked kind of similar oh, okay I'll, I'll look at that thanks thank you alright cool well thanks Marisol okay thank you all right, Marius. Yeah, I only got three things, not much. Ah, this thing uh, first threw me for a curveball because uh, I was thinking uh, it could be, uh, you know, just the, uh, 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 what's it, to cap them, you know, like a purple crust, but. Um, uh, that was just the dry end of it. The the bottom end was quite wet, and uh, I've got some pictures of it. And uh, I think even you were talking about uh, uh, the hyphia uh, colonizing uh, the, the 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 wood here. Can, can definitely see it's going. It's oh, really yes. yeah, yeah. And even the previous picture, you see it actually was growing over moss. You see there on the top. That is actually growing over the moss. Sorry, it's a bit out of focus. But, mm. uh, and, and then I, I you know, I, I first thought it was, uh, it was a tricaptum, um, but then uh, I put it into, um, you know, a naturalist and it, it's uh, suggested the uh, Pleviopsis. Um, and I think, uh, look, you had one similar posted a while ago that that you were unsure about that looks similar to this. Uh, Just before your trip to uh, San Fran, I think. It is Flaviosis crassa, crassa. I know that yeah. one. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, but maybe uh, look, it's the same that you have that you couldn't correctly classify. I'm just wondering what results in the different coloration of the skin. It could be oxidation or nutrient absorption. I it's don't just... know anything about the chemicals, but I know that the um, biopsis grassa has a light margin. 
and purple. It has a lot of purple. And then when it matures, it changes to a brown purple. And at the end, you, if you didn't know that that was Leopsis crassa, you wouldn't recognize it. But I have found it so many times that now I know it. Okay. It is Leopsis crassa. Uh, that, that's okay. correct then. Thanks. Yeah. What's your name? Gourmetissima. Okay. Yeah. Gour, gour medicinal. Gour medicinal. Right. Gourmet and See, medicinal. I, I gour medicinal. Okay. Gour medicinal. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this thing is lit, uh, throwing me for a little bit of a curveball, but uh, I think I know what it is. Uh, you Cecilia. Know, yeah, Cecilia. Um, mm -hmm. Because I was. Uh, this was really the true color. Uh, just go through the pictures and all the other colors I found were more uh, red. This one was burgundy. And uh, all of them were not dried out. I, I found it uh, uh, three, four days ago. Uh, yeah, right next to the road. I was stopped at the traffic light, turned, looked through my window <laughs> and there they were framed in the window. Oh literally. gosh. And I turned to park in the bank's parking lot and came over, took a couple of pictures and uh, could have a sample. But they're all nice and leathery and everything. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. Is and, that a uh, maple tree? Yeah, I, I, it, it's either oak or a maple. Yeah. They love I, oak. Yeah, so I think this is... Yeah, I find on maple. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, but look at that bark. I think uh, that may be oak. Yeah, I think it looks more like oak. Yeah. yeah. And standing. Uh, I find them on standing trees like this. Yeah, Not standing tree, mm -hmm. but the core was rotted out. Uh -huh. And it was still growing, but it was a, it, it, this hole right through the tree. Um, what's the other thing? Yeah, obviously, this doesn't have a stalk um, uh, mm -hmm. like the other uh, Granodermas. Curtisi, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's where mm -hmm. it gets its name from because it's sessile. Sessile, I mean, short. Sure. Can I ask a question about New Jersey sessile Ganodermas? Yeah. So I've been told that there are five Ganoderma. And so sessile is going to be one that doesn't have this type. Yeah. Is Apollinatum and Lobotum or Lobatum the other two that do not? Correct. Yeah. yeah Lobatum and Aplanatum don't have a type, only Curtisi, and there is a white one too. Okay, cool. Thank you. So, and the difference, usually, the difference, the big difference you'd see between the aplanatum and lobatum, and then this one is the varnish cap. So, this one's like a, what the ones that they call varnish caps. So, it's kind of shiny. Right. So, and the only, the only varnish cap without a stipe is going to be sessile. Sessile. No, but Aplanatum and Lobatum don't have a stipe. They're not varnished, though. He's in the oh, oh, I'm so sorry. The, uh, I think the, there's one that grows out west in the Pacific Northwest, um, Oregonensis or something that, that's a sessile um, uh, varnish cap. I'm not sure. The only, the only thing, Brandon, is you have to watch is sometimes this one, sessile, can have a rudimentary stipe on it. And Someone, I feel like her, and I feel like Curtisii sometimes does not. Yeah, <laughs> that is correct. I gotta say, personally, this looks like a hybrid between a reishi, a beef steak, mushroom, <laughs> and bacon. <laughs> <laughs> you looks wish. Like all of those. <laughs> and now I am hungry. <laughs> but yeah, you're you're correct, Brandon. They can like they're all so variable, but. Normally this doesn't have a stipe, but I do, I definitely, I have a dried one here that was growing in mulch and it's got a little stumpy stipe right in the middle. And then I feel like they all say they have, can have a pseudo stipe, which is like, you know, what is that? I guess that's so, kind of what I mean when I say stumpy little stipe, like a pseudo stipe. Yeah, the, is, a pseudo stipe is the context <sighs> is not differentiated from the rest of the of, of of the fruit body so it's all fruit like body, the same yeah. context it's just uh, some mm -hmm. of it is shaped into a stipe like projection okay. look yeah if i have a chance 
I found this weekend Ganoderma cecile growing on maple in rainy form, form. So it looks different to the other Ganoderma cecile, but Matt Schenk told me it's that reniform. It was so, so beautiful. So remind, remind me what reniform means. Yeah. Well, the, I'm not going to steal the conversation about this. We already talked about this. Oh, so this oh yeah. Before we, picture. do you, do you, what does reniform mean, Marisol? Do you know? Like a kidney. Ah, oh, okay. Reniform. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Renal, renal. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. That's a good way to remember. R E N I. Yeah. Yep. Reniform. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a good way to remember it. Well, we can look at it, uh, Marius. Uh, so, epidigeria. Yeah, so I think this is the, it, my wife get, got past it with a, a leaf blower, and that is why it's so dirty. Uh, the caps are also pretty sticky, but it was all under covered leaves uh, growing on this old uh, uh, rotted pine stump with some moss around it. So, cap is more yellow, but when I came around the next day to have a closer look at him again, uh, all those yeah, you know, it's it crumbled up, but uh, they were definitely gray color afterwards. A bit out of focus. Um, yeah, it's very dirty. Sorry. <laughs> I think the last one I cleaned up a bit. Yeah, I just keep going. Yeah, that last one is a bit cleaner. Yeah. We we found a fair number of these at uh, Wells Mills at yep. the um, the Club Foray, and. Um, as I recall, some of the ones that were harvested and put on the table, the caps start. They started out yellow, but then faded to like a gray color. Yeah, gray, gray, yeah, gray color, gray, gray. I would say gray brown, but more gray. I found. Um, is this a Mycena epiterigia variety lignicola? Because it's on the pine wood. No, I don't think this is Lignicol. Lignicol has a darker cap and, and like from the get-go, you know, when you see it in situ, it's kind of dark. I think it's a little more robust also. But these guys were quite protected, uh, to tell you this, on the, on the, literally on a pile of leaves. And I think that's where you're going to find mushrooms out. But I found the uh, Rushala in the back yesterday. Me too, me too. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Under, under the leaves. Me too, protected. Yep. Yeah. I could not believe it. <laughs> well, the squirrels found it. They a were red very one on a red one. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right, that's it. So for this one, it's the, the variety Lignicola. It's the one that's on pine wood. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm confirming. And then yeah, that's where I found it on pine wood. And then what was the variety that you were showing, Dave? This variety viscosa, which some sources separated out of the Apipterygia uh, group and just assign it a species name viscosa. So I'm not sure if that's been resolved. And yours was more of a gray cap on the ground? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a gray cap and it was kind of frosty on the ground, but very, very near um, the base of a pine. Okay. And is it one of these found? on usually on the ground yeah i have found it mm -hmm. so it is called epiterigia variety epiterigia uh -huh. yeah okay I, I think that's what these are actually no 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 if it's mm -hmm. on wood it's lignicola is what i understand well, the, the mycelium could grow up onto the wood especially like here that the wood is practically you want to part zoom of in on that see if it's Everything. growing on top or but I saw it on pieces of the bark, and I have photos growing on a tree. I can show you that. Yeah, this is pretty clearly like, I mean, that's pine wood right there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like fragments. Yep. Okay, so, well, maybe that's lignicola, but I, I, I thought lignicola was, had a darker cap. But maybe but, not. You know, yeah. The cap color might not be such an important feature. Yeah, but, but I tell you, I found it on Saturday, and when they are really young, the cap is gray bluish. And, and then like, I have all the samples, and the older ones are like this. They, it fades as the, it matures. The, no, like, they, these fade towards gray when they fade. They, 
the younger ones were more yellow. Mm -hmm. The, the, the stack is yellow green and then it fades to pale and then the cap even more. When you say pale towards gray. All right, cool. Let me see. <laughs> All right. That was that was it, right, Mary? Yeah, that was it. Yep. All right. Yeah, great. actually, uh, in Baroni's book, um, he's got a pipta rigid. A Pipterigia variety lignicol, and it looks just like this. So, yep. So, what page I, is that? I was wrong about that. Yeah, that's it, doesn't have to be dark. It looks just like the picture in Baroni's book. Okay. Wait, which one? On page uh, 201? But page 201. Yeah. Yeah, it looks just like I, I think that's the, pic, the picture there is. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got Jed's stuff here. I'm not sure if he's still with us. He said he might have to run. Huh, it's funny. Awesome. Baroni says um, a Pipterigera, Pipterigia, variety of Pipterigia has brown color in the cap. I thought it was the other way around. Well, that's interesting. I'll have to review that. So we keep Whoa. learning, huh? Do we sure. know the name for yeah, this? I don't know. It looks really familiar, but oh, yeah, is that, that, that lichen scripta thing? This is amazing. Wow, it almost looked like from the bottom of the sea. It looks like a fossil. Yeah. Oh, my look, it's God. almost it's cool. like the mushroom is saying, "Hey, worms! I know you're going to want to eat me, but I'm going to make you work for it." Uh, we call this brain coral. I'm a scuba diver. Mm. All right, but does anybody know? There's, there's no mushrooms in the water. <laughs> does does anybody know what this is? No. Well, Karen just just left the room. Let me see if I can get her. I think it's a lichen. Wow. Was, this like was it. not on a rock, was it? Uh, no, it looks it like wood. Wood. It looks like, it's wood. like wood. Okay. Let me see if she. Oh, yeah, it's def definitely wood. I, I don't think that's a lichen. No. No, it's not a lichen. Is it a fungus? Even. Wow. This is a fungus. Could be an uh, my seat. It, it yeah, that like is. It. I think it is an ASCO. I think Marisol's right because these these would all be um, little. What do they call those? The uh, hymenium. Yeah, the hymenium, but the the py pyromycetes. Pyromycetes. Mm, I don't know, but it looks like an ASCO mycete. It does. So it definitely looks like an ASCO. Wow. And then we get a parasitomycete. Which one? Paratheals. Mm -hmm. Is that what they call these? The little paratheals? Or these little these little black caps and they have the paratheals inside of them. The little like little pimples that have where the assay are forming in. Parathesia? Parathesia, yes. There you go. Wow, it's pretty interesting. I think I think it's definitely I think that's an ASCO for sure. Mm -hmm. I just haven't seen these. I haven't seen zoom in. There are a few like that in the book that I have these two volumes. Remember last year, there was a new book by this book, by this, this guy, French. One is French and one is from Denmark. And I have seen few, but I just don't know the name. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Then, oh, there are some more stink horns here. Oh, yeah. See how those are round. Oh, and look yeah. at and look at how it has a the dream board. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a. Is this mutant? This is a mutinous, is it? No, no, it has another name. This is um the Ravinelli. Vanellus Adriani, something like that. Ravinelli. Ravinelli. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's Ravinelli, and there's one other one. I'm going. Imputicus. Is it Impudicus? Oh, uh, Impudicus, yeah. And I, I think you can tell um, maybe from whether or not it has a basal vulva type thing. That might be the difference. I'm going to look it up now. And this one with the pink, it has pink rhizomorphs or cordons. You see the next photo. Oh, no, no, it's not. Uh, maybe, maybe. Okay. Some of them do. Some of them have remarkable cordons, yeah. Okay, and plus the fact that it has more of a spherical egg and not oblong. Yeah, that is a distinct difference from the one that we mm -hmm. saw earlier from Shihong. 
Hers wow. were, yeah, right. Hers were much more elongated. Mm -hmm. All right. And the pinkish color outside of, on the egg is another clue for the ID too. Plus the theme ball, yeah. All right, those were Chad's. I think he left. Oh, he goes to bed early, yeah. <laughs> He's smart. He doesn't stay up all night like us. What kind of mushrooms? Yeah. Okay, I have some stuff here. Um, okay. okay, the first one I have there are just some really nice little oysters. Well, people might like to say, which I just found this weekend in Philadelphia. So, so these are these are my favorite time. This is my favorite time to collect oyster mushrooms when it's cold out like this and they're small, they don't get really big and like soft. They stay like really hard and firm. And they really don't have much in the way of bugs, which bugs don't really bother me that much, but they're a pain in the butt to clean out. So there were a lot of these growing over the weekend. So look, you like to eat them when they're, so those look dry and they, they kind of crack a little bit. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's, and you, yeah, you like they, to eat them at that point. Yeah, they were, they're not like overly dry. These are still like nice and firm and fleshy. They were kind of cracked, you're right. Um, but yeah, this is like when they're the best, like really like yeah, firm. I, and... Yeah, I like oh, okay. to dry out my mushrooms also, but before I, I cook them. And I, I think when it gets cold like this, they taste better. They have like a, a nicer flavor. Mm -hmm. It's literally the old side. If you think about it, uh, mushroom is over 90% water. It's just, it's the same mushroom, it's just smaller. If it had more water, a better temperature would have grown larger, yeah. but it's more water than anything else. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. So they were fun. They were a nice little find. Okay. Is that a little orange? Was that a little orange mushroom in the center of all those? Yeah, there was something else on there, which... Something, something I, going on? I didn't... Um, there was something else going on there, which... Yeah. It might have been pins of more oysters. I'm not really sure. Like I didn't too, uh, too, too orange for that. I didn't. I didn't notice them until after I got home and looked at the photograph. Because I was just kind of grabbing them and moving. Because this is what I was really looking for. More stuff like this. This is a dentocorticium cordoricens, and this is a really nice flush of it. I'm going to actually start back here, so you can see how big this log was. About three feet long. So you can see all of this. See it all there? This is a different polypore here, but all down through here. Oh wow. This was all on the underside. Although you could you could see it creeping up along the side. And there's something else going on down here. You got like four things there. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this yeah. White, white <laughs> in the is that thing. white? Yeah. yeah. There are probably five things going there. Yeah, there's a lot going in that. Would. Yeah, there's a couple of things going on there. So, no, nah, that's not the best picture. No, we. I'm trying to. This one was really poroid. And when the when this particular crust, usually it's a crust, but it does project outward as well. When it's young and fresh, it presents as a as with pores like this, sort of kind of dialoid, I guess you'd call this maze like. It's a little bit broken up. So but if you go a bit up to the top. Uh, to the left, is that a is that an overhang? Or is that a bracket that forms? Nope, that's part of the overhang. But I'll get to that. Oh, okay. I do have some pictures of that. These pores quickly break up though, and it becomes um, hydnoid, so they form spines. And I will often find these over the winter, like later in the winter, when they're like completely spined and they've lost all this green yellow color, and they are completely uh, grayish white. So that's the end of the log. The colors don't quite come through on this. This has a really distinct greenish yellow hue to it. Wow. So this is this is more of the like later season is where you would see this color kind of presentation. I think I usually see it growing right now. This is earlier in the season for it. This is fresh stuff here. See, they have this peculiar kind of green mustard kind of yeah green mustard blue, color green right mustard yeah it's beautiful yep. Yep. and that's what i'm saying is they fade to that color though no this is the fresh color 
Oh, they, okay. They gotcha. fade. They fade to this odd gray color over the winter. Cool. Thank you. Yep. And so I think I found this, and nobody knew what it was on, on Mushroom Observer. What's the species name on that? Dento corticium corticium. Porto Rico. Porto. Oh. Porto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Ah, yep. see it right there. Thank you. <laughs> Can you guys see Got that it. there? Yeah. Yep. So yeah, here, here's what Marius was uh, suggesting. It does have this is a over, overhanging cap, a projecting cap. This is about an inch out from the wood, but really long. So they do arrow edge. Yeah, they do reflex outward. Mm -hmm. There you go. There's a better shot of the pores. Look, I never saw the spines. I always see it like this, like you what you're showing. Yeah, I, over, I don't know the spines. Yeah, over the winter, they like they, these these pores degrade into spines over the winter. Oh, okay. Which is confusing, but I think if you read it in overhaul, overhaul, that's like one of the only books I've ever seen it described in. Right. And it has a different genus back then, but it still has the same species name. I think he okay. describes it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's beautiful. What a beauty. Yep. Yeah. And it's flexible. It's very thin and flexible. And it comes off the wood so easy, so easily. And then and Luke, yeah. real quick. The, uh, so did you find the pore surface growing? Like, did you flip the log and that? kind of capish thing was growing not out of the bottom of it and the pore surface was on the bottom or it was all over the bottom and the sides so i saw it okay. growing on the sides first and then when i flipped the log most of the underside was covered in it got you okay yep. cool and then on that same log so this is um deodala deodaliopsis Fergosa growing over top. How do you it. know that? What makes you think that is that? That. Uh, just the color. And it doesn't, it's not a cap. It doesn't the, have a the cap. Bruising this was, also. This, this was growing on the bottom of the log. So I would think it was just growing resupinate on the bottom it's of the log a, because it didn't have a chance to, you know, reflex outward. Very unusual. And the, the bruising is 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 a feature of that species. Yeah, I thought it was unusual to Marisol the way the that it was growing underneath like that. But if you look at the pores, they're pretty distinct in that. Like, see how you got like that. Uh, I, I don't know, but there. I don't I don't agree. <laughs> you don't know, okay. No, I I never read that it grows a soup nate. Never. Yeah, but most of these polypores will grow resupinate if they get stuck underneath or something like that. Huh. Okay, I mean, sure, maybe it's not. I could be maybe wrong in that. Maybe it's or one of these weird names. I don't know. But it understand. was also it was also much firmer than any of the like the, like a seriop a, a seriporiopsis. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, no. it, it was much firmer than that. I mean, oh. it was hard and quirky. So like or this one called mollies. One Mollis. called Mollis. Mo which one? Mollis is the species, but I cannot remember the name, the first name. Does that bruise like this? Oh, that I don't know. But See, that was that's one of the distinguishing features, okay. as Dave was pointing out. See how I like where I touched it? You know, mm -hmm. So it's like pinkish, mm -hmm. and as soon as I touch it, it browns yeah. and then gets that color. That's mm -hmm. what immediately made me think of Theodoliopsis. Uh, why don't you put it in the cross group to see what they say? Because look at the little one growing in, next to it. Yeah, I mean, that's what they look like when they're young. Oh, okay. I, I could. See the, yeah. look at the, look at those pores. Look oh, yeah, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. See how some yeah, of them are really yeah, elongated? Yeah, yeah. It's very unusual. And uh, also, but look at that. Look how it's just growing at the top. Look how it's just, but look also how it's just overwhelming that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Isn't that yeah. crazy? It is. There was some serious, like, fist fighting going on inside that log. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say it, it looks like that one won right here. Yeah, sure does, huh? Cool. So anyway, that's that. Uh another stereum. I keep practicing with these stereums, so I felt good about this one. Lobatum. 
because it's very pinched, velvety, no erect hairs on it at all. And you can see the bands wearing away. Oh. See how the bands are like really distinctly wearing so, away? And so showing... eventually you will see like a smooth, yep. sunny, orangey cap? Correct. The, oh. che the chestnut brown context that just, uh, it says the, the, vel the velvet hairs wear away in bands to reveal mm -hmm. a chestnut brown context. Nice. And then of and course- no, And no staining or no, with staining? No, with staining. Cool. So there's the yellow staining. That's where I licked it. To do the same thing, I practiced two. I found it two. <laughs> Just one, <laughs> one at the time. And then let me see. Hmm. It's like I forgot to put a link in here. But let me go back. I have one more, and this is a new species named for me. Although I have seen this species a bunch of times. Check out this trick I just learned on iNaturalist. A shortcut when you're typing in, like, so I'm going to see, I have my cursor in my toolbar up here. Instead of typing out the whole uh, name, I can just write that. And then, whoops, the first couple letters of each, you know, the oh. genus species, and it comes right up. Uh huh. So Stecorinum reniformi, which is why I was so interested in your name, reniform. So this is a Stecorinum. This is, I, I would have, I did initially call this subrolacens. Oh. Stecorinum subrolacens, which I just learned, um, this is wrong. I flagged this for curation on my natural, especially with Metroloidia. The genus has changed, but so we'll say Metroloidia sub Roa Kents. Roa Kents is actually an island in this, like somewhere on the other side of the world. And the one that we have here is like Roa Kents, so we call it sub Roa Kents. But <clears throat> I found this, I find this pretty regularly. This is one of those Metuloideas that smell like cinnamon. It's hidenoid. So you can see it has spines on the underside, right? And the top of it is zonate with hairs on it. Really tiny, tiny spores. These are like two by three, two and a half by three and a half. Um, but I sent it up to, I sent it to Sigrid up in New York and uh, she sequenced it for me. And Ooh. when we blasted it, it's coming back with this name, run a for me which is a newer name. It's only, I think only just been published this year. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure that it's actually that because in, in GenBank, there's only three other, um, three, or, three, three or three more occurrences of this name. And it's all by the same people for this single paper oh. that they put out. Um, there's a, there is another single match with something that um, Stephen Russell found. But I noticed Django Grootmeyer is using this name a lot. So I think they're replacing Subral Kents with this name, Stecorinum or Metuloides uh, reniformi. So, so anyway, it's an interesting new name. And that's grown out of the end of a branch? Yep, out of the end of a branch. So. And that's often how you find it. It's just one or two of these. Um, I think earlier this year, I found a bigger cluster of them, three or four. But like I was talking to um, a friend up in New York, Tom Bigelow, and he says, because they find this up in New York, although the one that they find doesn't, the DNA sequence doesn't exactly match this one. But um, I think it was off by like one base pair. But he often finds it growing like that, like one single fruit body or two fruit bodies, just like that. So it has teeth. It does have teeth. Yep. Wow. I kind of glossed over it when I saw it. Oh, nice. To go. That's why I didn't take very good pictures of it because I find it pretty often. That's why, you know, and we've just gotten used to calling it that name, Subraw Kents. But mm -hmm. 
I guess um, Tom Bigelow said that they sequenced some and they, theirs was coming up. They couldn't get a good match on it with anything. So mm. that's why we had this one sequenced. So. And Luke, it looks like those teeth are kind of more blunted than a lot mm -hmm. of the toothed mushrooms that you would find. Like, yeah. Oh, because it's younger, probably. Yeah, I think this one was pretty young, but I think generally the teeth on these are pretty small. Like pretty short, they're pretty short little things. I have to read the, I do have to read the paper. I just got a hold of the paper yesterday. It just came out earlier this year. Um, yeah, I think that the, the, I'm sorry, you go ahead. I was just gonna say, I glossed over it last night. Um, mm -hmm. There was a, a short description for this in there. The spores matched pretty well, like within like half a micron, so. Mm -hmm. Can you show the top, please? Oh. Harry, yeah? Yeah, Harry, like, oh, like mostly, short. Yeah. All over or mostly towards the attachment part? Oh. It looks like it becomes much hairier towards the point of attachment, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Oh, look at the little ones growing near the wood, new caps or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little clubby, little clubby guys. And again, oh, and again, a really intense smell of cinnamon. Nice. Or coumarin. Coumarin is what they always say in the literature. Although I have no idea what coumarin really smells like. Yeah, or, I have no coum idea. Coumarin? Coumarin. It's, a, it's some kind of plant chemical. You know, some, some kind of combination substance. of cumin and cinnamon. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> no, that's yeah, that's that's not accurate. No, cumin is too strong. No, no. No, cumin. <laughs> I have had to deal with tasting black cumin seed oil during flu season, and I gotta tell you, it's strong. So is cinnamon. Mm. Well, cumarin is what I've read is, and I've only just kind of glanced at it is some kind of chemical that's found in plants that they they, 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 do, they do use in medicine. They use it for, as a blood thinner. That's what they make yeah. cumidin out of, or originally yeah, it's did. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a rat poison. Rat poison? <laughs> mm -hmm. really? That's what cumidin <laughs> is. That's what it was developed for originally. Right. I mean, it thins out the blood, then the rat bleeds out. Okay. Precisely. Okay. So that they say in here that, that the smell of this is cumarin. But again, I don't know what that smell really smells like. But it to me, rats. it smells like like cinnamon. <laughs> I guess it smells like rat poison. I guess. <laughs> Somebody wrote a note on the chat that is the smell of grass, some grass and ferns. Grass and smell of well, cyanide grass. smells like almonds. So yeah. who knows? Yeah, well, because... I, I, again, the, that word coumarin I read, or that the chemical, the substance that coumarin is. Is to, was originally derived from a grass. So. Look, when did you find this one? Um, when did I find this? October fifteenth. Oh, okay, okay. But I, but I have also seen what I say is the same species, what I think is the same species, in the middle of the summer. Mm. And that's and these, when we found a lot of the other one, the fragrance. Right. A lot. Yeah, I saw fragrance this weekend too. Oh boy, okay. But, and then again, I'll say I've seen this, this fruit body really persists because I've also seen it in the middle of the winter, like the dead of winter, January, mm -hmm. February with the spines on it and you can still smell it. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, that's it for me. Is there anybody else here tonight? Maybe that came late, that had anything they wanted to share? Luke, while, you, while you're waiting for someone, I just want to say, um, in Baroni's book, the reason why I suggested um, Ravenelii for that first stinkhorn that we saw, there were a few of them, red, the red ones with the non-differentiated cap. He's got a mistake in his book, apparently. He's got a picture of Mutinus elegans. Uh, those are the on first ones, yeah. Yeah, first on one. the Ravenelii page. I thought, that's, I thought something seemed wrong there, and it is. Look, if nobody says anything, I would like to show the Ganoderma, the reniform. Okay. If nobody's in. Okay. Yep. Marisol, Marisol, I wanted to 
uh, oh. maybe share a oh, um, please do, do, do. that that dacromyces that you showed earlier i found something similar literally today uh -huh. that i wasn't able to look into but it didn't feel jelly like at all so i wanted to maybe share that and compare okay, go ahead. well we have time yeah. but but dave go, go ahead what, what were you saying homie or uh, i was Dave. i was I would say we have time, so both of you get your stuff ready and whoever go ahead, Brandon, and then I'll go after goes you. first, goes first. <laughs> All right, gotcha. Okay, go, Brandon. But Dave was saying something. Oh yeah, there's on on in Veroni's book, the page that's called Mutinus Ravenelii, and which I is also called Phallus Ravenelii, I believe as well. It's um Oh, wait, are there two stinkhorns that are called raviolii? I don't think so. Um, but anyway, he's got... He, it looks like he's describing raviolii, um, but he's got a picture of what looks like um, mutinous elegans. So I think there's a mistake in the book. I, you know, I'm going to have to do a little research on that before I want to make before I want to accuse him of making a mistake. Anyway, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. I, I was listening to you, but um, yeah, this is, I guess I found this today and it looks a lot like that Dacromyces that you found uh, Marisol, but this was super hard. So, I mean, it might have elemental effects, but it was like a crust fungus really. Well, and I'll show some more photos. How cold was it across. when you found it? It could be frozen. Yeah, it could be frozen. Or, dr yeah. or dry. Or dried out. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have uh -huh. one of that light lying on my backyard, and uh, I keep watching it when it's dry, it looks like that, and then it totally plumps up. And then it's like totally jelly. And the color intensifies. It's yeah, really look, look, look like yep. it. See, it's this definitely. Uh, dried out if you can see the, the surface mm -hmm. on the wood mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i bet you that uh, when you hydrate that that's going to be very gelatinous you say tremella marisol the tremella or, or dacrimices depending yeah Only no it looks more like tremella it looks too big yeah so it the dacrimices that you found earlier was tiny 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 it was narrow very long and merulioid this one is like different. This one is a little different. Mine has like cavities. You know what I mean? Between the weird veins, there were cavities. Yours is like a brain loops. I can't explain it. Right. Okay. So you think that's a tremella? It looks to me, yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, is that cool. hardwood that it's on? Looks like uh, maybe. I would say so. I mean, it was, I was in a very mixed area today, but I would say this was hardwood. Yeah, that would favor tremola. Tremella, whichever way you want to say. Well, I want to correct a correction that I just made. Apparently, there are two stinkhorns called ravenellii. Mutinus ravenellii, which is similar to mutinus elegans, and phallus ravenellii which is similar to Phallus impudicus. So I didn't, I never realized that there's two stinkhorns named Ravenelli. Hmm. And then while I have you all attention, I wanted to share, I found this today as well. And I thought it was a tricholoma. I mean, it's pretty large. Looks like bluets. That From I thought I thought the same thing. Uh, what's the best photo to share? Pretty tightly spaced gills, which I guess also leans towards blue it. That gills look thing. a little bit different. You need a spore yeah. print. Yeah, I'm waiting on one now. Collect on white and black, because if it's really light, it'll look white on the black. 
I feel like the identifying factor for me, so it every one, I feel like I've been finding this particular mushroom in different stages of decay over the past couple of weeks. And all of them have this cleft foot, every single one. These are the freshest ones that I found today. This is the, these are the same ones from that clump that you started showing? Yep. Yeah, I don't think that's a bluet. Yeah, me either. Yeah, no, that's something else. It Here's looked you. from the top, it looked like a cluster of bluets, but this is something else. Can you zoom in on the gills? Yep. Does that work for you guys? Do you get that zoom? Yeah. Yeah, it's working. I think there's some sort of triculoma. That's that's what I was wondering because it does look yeah. notched. And uh, yeah, and I think that the marginate gills too. I think there's a few triculomas that have that. That see the gills on the edges are darker. Yep. There's. Do you smell it by any chance? Yeah, I'm so bad at that. I can't oh. smell anything. <laughs> oh, because I only say this for a reason. I know Dicolomas are found late in the season, and I just found a lot Dicoloma odorum. And oh yeah, Saturday, it wasn't. It, it was not Saturday. odorum. No, odorum. It was okay. not odorum. I can smell no. odorum. Odorum is horrible. Yeah, Odorum yeah, will wake you up if you're oh. sleeping. Somebody puts it by your nose. Yeah. I, I, I'm bad at smelling things, but it was not Odorum because okay. that, that, that is a recognizable smell. Yeah. Um, let's see. So the stipe did stain kind of yellowish brown when I rubbed on it. I know that's not a great identifier. Uh, white mycelium at the bottom here. And even on this like really kind of short stiped one, you can still see the cleft at the bottom. They all had that little kind of half J to full J at the bottom. Yeah, I would, I would think it's a trecholoma of some sort. And then the cross veining on this photograph. I don't know if you can kind of see it. Yeah, that's very unusual. But I mean, dis distinct cross veining. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I thought trecholoma as well, but. That's re really strange. Yeah, that's all I got. Cool. All right, Marisol. All right. All right. So here, why you can show it right? It's weird. All right. So I made this post in uh, the cross fungi and polypores. Um, when I found it younger, right? They look like this, but I didn't know what it, I knew it was Ganoderma, but I could not remember if it was Cortici, but underneath it didn't have a stipe. This is really small, like a chocolate chip cookie size, kind of. No, not the gi gigantic chocolate chip cook cookie, a small cookie. And this is what I found um, like three months later. That's the same thing three months later. The same exact fruit body? The same thing. It's Ganoderma cecile reniform. And it's growing on a maple tree that is laying on a swampy area. I put saliva on it <laughs> to make it shiny. <laughs> I cleaned it. And then there were four fruiting bodies. This is another one, right? I found it this, yeah, the same day. This is the result. It was so what, what is it? What is it that distinguishes this from Cartesii? The no type. There is no type. I'm going to show you underneath. I posted the photos from three months ago. Oh, geez. Oh, I didn't do it. Oh, I didn't do it. When Mushrooms it? have the best form of puberty. <laughs> Let me see if I can find the photos in. in no, silly me. I didn't put the 
or this is underneath. See, the point of attachment is right there where I am nose type. And on the top is like that. Oh, this is the third one. This is a third. Yeah, okay. This one is more open here. You can see that rainy form. So Cecile, because I'm not, I'm not used to find Ganoderma Cecile looking like this. I want to, do I have time to show you one more? Uh, Ganoderma Cecile, but the other kind, no reniform. Oops. So Wait, variation reniform. This is in New Jersey, yeah. Ah, on maple. Yeah. All the other ones, Ganoderma Ceciles, are on oak. This is Ooh. the one that I used to identify as Ganoderma Cecile on oak. I'll show you. And that maple was decaying, like yeah. dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Okay, this one I found a year ago on the same place, on the maple, on the same swamp. Look at that beauty. And I took, I took it as I found it, then I removed all the different things and it was so gorgeous. So this is one is the mom. No, no, I should say that. This one was a year ago. And then let me show you the ones that I am used to identify as Cecile right here. Uh, no, no, it's not, no, but it's okay. This is a, yeah, it's a little different. This one is in, in let me see if I wrote the wood beach. No, 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 no. Hollow wood. Oh, I didn't write. I didn't write what kind of wood. No, I didn't mean that. One more, one more chance um, here. All right. This one is growing at the base of huge oak tree. Very, very close to me is humongous. And I know it is sessile because it has no type and the color, the orange yellow color. Those are babies. That's the tree and they are is growing right here. Another year, I found it growing right here. This is an old, huge oak. It's growing right here, all right here. And let's see. Oh, this, oh, what happened there? No, it's not loading. Not loading. Loading. All right. See right there? It's kind of a unique growth structure. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, Marcel. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that brought us right up to nine o'clock. So mm -hmm. amazing. Amazingly, we had enough mushrooms to fill up two hours. Um, yeah. Before we go, I just wanted to show you because I did have queued up in, in case because. One of these days soon, we're going to run out of mushrooms to look at because it gets colder and colder. Um, I had mentioned in the email that I had a, um, a fundus project to work on. That's the wrong one. Excuse me, that's the wrong one. Here we go. I put a filter together on iNaturalist to bring us right to this page. So this is what I was thinking about, you know, as we go later into the year and we start running out of our own mushrooms to look at. These mushrooms, so everything that's on this page are mushrooms that are in the fundus biodiversity survey. So that is a uh, part of fundus, the fungal, um, you, know, the, you know, the big fundus, fundus project, formerly the North American Mycoflora project. These are all in that project. And these of all are going into a specific project within iNaturalist that's being curated. So they're supposedly not allowing any like poor quality observations to go into here. And these are all New Jersey mushrooms. So everything on this page is a New Jersey mushroom. So we could like work our way through here. So like you see, this is Kira. A lot of you guys know Kira. She's a member of our club. Mm -hmm. um, this is, she only has a single photograph in here, but I was thinking we could work our way through this, you know, in some of our downtime over the winter and uh, just work on identifying, we'll skip over the, 
the lichens because they're not supposed to be in here either. I think they'll get thrown out of here. They don't want lichens, they only want actual mushrooms. Luke, how do we post to this iNaturalist? Well, you could this. go, how do you post to it? Like if you want to yeah. put an observation of your own personal observation in it? Yep. You go to- You just add them to the yeah, project. You, yeah, you just add to it. So I'll, I'll just show you one real quick. Like here's, this is something of mine. When you're actually making the observation, you would just, you have to join the um, project first. And okay. then you, you would just click onto it that it should be part of that. This is one of those ones where you have to actually physically add it to it. As opposed to some projects which automatically collect it. Like I, I have like this project here, this will automatically suck up anything that meets the criteria of a fungus wow. that I'm looking for. This, wow. one you, this one you actually have to add it physically yourself. But again, mm -hmm. they only want, they're asking for only um, high grade observations in here. In fact, here's what they're saying about it. Welcome to the Fungal Diversity Survey INAT project. And thank you for sharing. Your observations will contribute to helping us understand and protect fungi. Find out more about our conservation initiatives and how your observations in this project will help conservations across the continent by visiting, there's a website. Um, we have identifiers on this project. So if you, if you add to this an observation, we'll do our best to ID it. And that's how I was thinking how NJMA could help with this project is if we collectively work on these IDs over the winter for New Jersey mushrooms themselves, um, we can probably add some good identifications to it. Um, but then they go on to ask that, you know, that we're, they're really good observations. And somewhere in here, they actually do say that they're curating them. So I guess if you're putting in, you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, out of focus stuff and stuff without like <laughs> good, good things, like supposedly they'll throw it out. And I've, I've looked through a lot of them. I mean, there's 71,000 observations on here and generally they look really good. And if you see who the people are that are really adding it, John Plischke, uh, some lady named Maricel, um, <laughs> Sigrid, you know, they're, these are, these are like some of the better people that we know of obviously. <laughs> so anyway, that was my fault. We don't have time tonight, but um, eventually we'll get to a point where we need to start working on something besides stuff that we're finding. So. Well, that's great. Thank you for cool. that. Cause I can't wait to watch the fundest one uh, talk from Nymph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was watching. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, I was talking to that lady. Um, yeah, what was her name? I forget what her name was. Anyway, yeah, that was a good one. Gabriella. So, Gabriella. That's Gabriella. Her name. Yeah, Gabriella. So. She's the editor. Um, she does editing for them. She edits. Uh, uh, if you submitted a blog and it, and it was edited, that, that was probably her work. She's a good editor. Yeah. All right. So anyway, thank you everyone who contributed. Um, thank you. Nice to see we had 29 people in here tonight. So uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, exciting. Everyone's pumped mm -hmm. about the fungus. <laughs> All right, well, everyone have a great week and we'll see everyone next week. Regular motions? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, we're yeah. still finding stuff. I so. still have. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're I, I found some today. Good, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we've, got, we've got plenty of stuff to work with for now. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. All right, see everyone next week. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.